Now we're going to talk a little bit about the sports medicine team and even sports injury prevention. It's important as a fitness professional that we know how to interact with other folks that are in the medical community because it's very possible at some point you are going to be working with somebody that's experienced uh, working with a medical team or anybody in the sports medicine industry. And as those folks have their own protocols and their own areas of expertise, you may be called upon to help either further their objectives or you might have to clearly understand what the process your client or athlete has already gone through when they come to you. So understanding this can be, can be vital to your relationship with your client or athlete. So sports medicine is often defined as total medical care of the exercise individual. Very often we think only in terms of orthopedics or the musculoskeletal system when we're dealing with uh, sports medicine. And in reality, when uh, organized teams are working with athletes, there's a total continuum of care that they have and working with the entire athlete's health, mental, and nutritional well-being. For example, a sports medicine team might consist of various different kinds of physicians. The family physician is somebody that might take care of the, the colds and just general health problems. Your sports physician may have some, maybe somebody that's a little bit more in tune with the uh, injuries, both uh, chronic and overuse injuries that are associated with the activity that the athlete is participating in. Your orthopedic surgeon, of course, is the one who's going to provide surgical intervention once it gets to that point, if it gets to that point. The radiologist is the individual that has to read the x-rays and or the MRIs. They're going to, part of what they're going to be doing is responsible for interpreting the diagnostic information that's taken through those tests. The physiotherapist is going to be providing potentially manual uh, intervention with mobilizations as well as some of the uh, passive modalities that we'll talk about and they'll be part of the entire rehabilitation process. And a massage therapist, for example, is going to provide soft tissue uh, release and or soft tissue uh, changes in, in the soft tissue to help expedite the healing process. You've got podiatrists that deal with predominantly with the foot and the ankle. You'll have your dietitian that's looking at the nutritional concerns of your, of your athlete. Again, the physiotherapist, the psychologist that may be dealing with uh, performance related uh, mental issues with your client or athlete and how they can overcome certain uh, uh, mental barriers that they may have to their performance. Your sports trainer may be something related, uh, similar to the coach. They, they can be sports-specific uh, strength and conditioning coaches that are related to performance enhancement as well. The exercise physiologist may be a little bit more on the clinical side, looking at sort of cardiovascular and physiological parameters as they're helping train this, this athlete for the next level. And you might be the fitness advisor, and the fitness advisor certainly is going to look at general conditioning as well as some of the other topics that we're going to talk about and the role that you may play as part of this entire team. So we, un we have to understand that it's not just about injuries and that a, a real athlete that's dealing, that's especially at the professional college or Olympic level, may have access to all these different kinds of professionals. And at times they may be getting conflicting information from different folks. So our job is not to try to contradict anybody. Our job is just to listen and understand where this person has come from in the first place. So if we want to, uh, some of the performance enhancing things that we're going to see from the sports medicine side of things is certainly going to be nutrition. And that may or may not fall into your uh, area of expertise or even into your uh, professional boundaries depending on where you work and the type of work that you're doing. But nutrition is a big part of, of the performance aspects that need to be controlled and can often be overseen by one of the professionals on the sports medicine team. And psychology again. And sometimes psychology is not just about performance enhancement. If, uh, if the elite athlete, of course, we're, we're, we often are more familiar with this kind of stuff, uh, even has outside distractions, family issues, or something that that's related to their performance, then that part of the team is going to address that as well. So emphasizing that the athlete is coming to you and if they're part of a sports medicine program that has access to all these folks, you're going to need to know what the areas of expertise that each of those are bringing to the team, how you might have to communicate with them at some time, and for your own benefit, knowing where they've come from so that you can again further, uh, further the, the objectives of the individual that they've worked with prior to seeing you. So some of the potential medical problems that the sports medicine team might encounter and that they might have to deal with are medical emergencies, things that are actually happening on the field, whether it's a, a cardiovascular emergency or whether there's a, a serious acute injury that happens right on the field. Um, cardiovascularly, not only are they working with cardiovascular conditioning, but they've also got to make sure that the person doesn't have any risk factors to participate in the sports that they're participating in. Uh, respiratory issues, and that can also be related to not only uh, the ability for the um, athlete to 
be able to take in the appropriate amount of oxygen that they need, but also even the environment that they're practicing or participating in. We've got to be concerned, there are concerns with that type of thing. Gastrointestinal problems, as far as digestion is concerned, et cetera. Diabetes, epilepsy, these are all things that we have to be monitored as the athlete is moving along because it can affect their performance and at the same time it's, it's the potential for uh, some catastrophic injuries that can occur. And, and it's very possible that not only the athlete but those around them could be injured as well. We, obviously, we see joint-related issues in all kinds of sports-related activities, but uh, working in the environments, or I should say the environments that these athletes get in as far as locker rooms, et cetera, or if they're playing on fields or even AstroTurf, they're very prone to infections. And these are other things that they're going to be, that the sports medicine team will be dealing with. And fatigue. And fatigue is a big one because uh, very often our athletes are highly competitive people, type A personalities, not getting the appropriate rest, and that will also lead to breakdown and potentially cause problems all part of the sports medicine team. So one of the things that we might also see as part of what their responsibilities are going to be is that they're going to provide exercise prescription. Now that may be from a rehabilitative standpoint, it may be from a performance standpoint. Certainly they're going to provide screening. We want to, and that, uh, covering all those previous topics that we talked about because we want to make sure that the athlete is not going to get hurt or die <laughs> participating in their event. We want to make sure that the, there's an understanding of the medications they're on, their interactions with their medications, how that may affect their training and their performance, and also even ethics. And uh, we're not going to get into ethics. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. When we're looking at sports injuries, it's also important to understand the difference between acute and overuse, and, and overuse injuries can also become chronic injuries as well. An acute injury is something that's happening immediately at that time as a result of a specific event. An overuse injury is typically related to poor mechanics or poor technique over a period of time, and those overuse injuries, if the mechanics and the technique aren't addressed, will ultimately lead to some kind of chronic injury. Some of the more typical um, objective tests that are, that are used, and, and we mentioned earlier that the radiologist might be responsible for interpreting many of these, are x-rays and bone scans, a CT scan, an ultrasound, and MRIs. And these are things certainly that are all part of the medical community, very high-tech types of uh, objective measurements, and also requires a uh, professional, medical professional to be able to read that information and interpret it, what it means. Okay. Some of the passive treatments that you're going to see that some of these athletes may have gone through passive means that the athlete has not participated in it, and, and instead they've been, it's been done to them. So things like RICE, which, stand, which is an acronym for, rice, for rest, ice, compression, and elevation. Immobilization, they may have had to keep a part of their body from being used for a certain amount of time to allow tissue to heal. They might be taking necessary drugs. We have hot and cold therapy that serve uh, certain points or are used at certain times as intervention during a sports injury. And we have the different uh, electrotherapeutic modalities such as ultrasound and the TENS unit that are used to either block pain perception or help with inflammation and that sort of thing. So these are some of the things that you're, again, that the athlete will probably have been exposed to prior to coming to see you if they've had an injury. And as part of the injury prevention, now this, uh, this is a, a topic where we as fitness professionals get to play more of a significant role because we are not going to identify the injury problem. That's going to be part of the sports medicine team. But we can participate in where the risk factors are and we can also help modify those risk factors because when we're assessing and we're looking at the movements and the way that the athlete is executing what they're doing, this gives us a, a great opportunity to provide our expertise and to pr improve the quality of their movement and therefore if the quality of their movement improves, which is going to be related to the risk factors, then there's a very good chance that they're not going to get hurt in the long term. So understanding what the process the athlete has come through, understanding the different professionals that you may have to interact with can be very beneficial into your ability to build rapport with your client, to work with these other professionals in conjunction with what their long-term objectives are for the athlete and ultimately help this athlete have the most success possible.